Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation I'm going to talk about the simulator called iTeach Spectra. This is one of my favourite simulators because of the reaction we get when people uh, see it in action. Sometimes it's not easy to understand how the vibration spectrum works, what are all the peaks about and so on, and if you have to look at uh, information about the spectrum in printed material, it's there are some good uh, diagrams out there, but this sort of makes it uh, come to life, I suppose you'd say. Our focus is on this machine we have here. We've got you know, the pulley on the end of the shaft, supported by the bearings, and on the pull on the shaft is a fan with orange blades. There's about, let's just call it 10 orange blades there. So, let's look at that in more detail. With this simulator, I can control the, the vibration that comes from the shaft, the once per revolution vibration from the shaft turning once per revolution. Uh, we've got vibration from this bearing. And in this case, I'm just simplifying the vibration. Bearings can generate vibration that's not very smooth, but just for the sake of this demonstration, the vibration is going to look quite smooth. And I can control the vibration from the fan, the orange fan. So basically, I can turn on the vibration. I can make the amplitude of that vibration uh, higher and lower. And I can also control the speed of the motor, which obviously controls the speed of this shaft via the belt. So I can increase the frequency or the speed, which increases the frequency of my signal. And here I am showing one waveform in blue and the other waveform in the, which in this case is grey. Now this is the vibration uh, that I've turned on over here which is from the shaft. It's grey because it represents the grey vibration. The blue vibration down here is the measured vibration through this sensor. Now what I'm going to do is add vibration from the bearing. And now you see two things happening. Over here we now have a grain, uh, sorry, a green waveform from the bearing. The balls in the bearing roll around and generate vibration at a higher frequency than the once per revolution vibrational frequency from the shaft. So there's my lower frequency and in this case higher amplitude vibration from the shaft and here's my lower amplitude but higher frequency vibration from the bearing. The grey shaft generates this grey vibration. The green bearings generate this green vibration. Now this is great because, you know, if I was to say, well, the green bearings were behaving, there was no problem, and there is no green vibration. Now I have a little bit of vibration. I can, I can look at this and see that I'm getting a lot of vibration from the shaft and only a little bit of vibration from the bearings, which is great. But that's not how it works in reality. In reality, this is the waveform that comes from the sensor. It's a combination of all the sources of vibration which cause this bearing housing to vibrate. The once per revolution vibration, the vibration from within the bearing itself, and the vibration from the fan, which I'm showing here is orange because the fan was an orange sort of color. And I can make the fan vibration up higher and I can make it down much lower. But here I am seeing the combination of all three vibrations, you know, regard, you know, depending on how the uh, amplitude of the three uh, are in proportion to each other determines how this waveform looks down here. So in reality, this is the cable that we plug into our data collector. This is what the data collector records. But it's very difficult to look at this waveform and, and know what is happening with the machine. Yep, I get a sense in this instance for how much unbalanced there might be because I can still see this signal and with the ripple on top, but I certainly can't tell whether that ripple is from the, the bearings or the uh, fan. It's just hard to tell. So, what I can do is depict all this as the fast Fourier transform itself. And you might look at all this and say, well, where is the spectrum? Well, it's right here because this is not 
just a box. It is a cube. It's the magic FFT cube, Fast Fourier Transform cube. On this side of the cube, we have a graph that relates the passage of time and amplitude. But by asking the cube to rotate just halfway around, now we see the introduction of frequency. We have frequency along this side of the cube. So if I speed the machine up, which increases all the frequencies, you can see the waveforms moved further along up into the higher frequency area. If I slow the machine down, then they're all up closer to this end. Yes, the shape of the waveform changes, but I've positioned the waveforms along this axis here, which is related to frequency. So I'll just put them back in a nice spot. So that's all good. And now we have separated these three sources of vibration into their three component parts. The vibration from the shaft, which is a different frequency to the vibration from the bearings and the vibration from the fan. It's, we can only separate them uh, in this way because they are different frequencies. And that's what the FFT does. So let's complete the picture. What I'm going to do is let's, let's move around now. So we're just looking at this side of the cube. And here we go. The cube rotates around and bingo, there's the spectrum. Now you might sort of say, but you know, if those waveforms are behind there, what happened to the bottom of the waveform? Well, when you do the FFT calculation, it, all the numbers go positive, all the negative and positive, you know, it's basically summed together and made into a positive. That's a simple way of describing it. So the bottom line is, if I just check this box or uncheck it, you know, there is actually the whole waveform, and I can manually rotate this around, and you can still see those waveforms are there. In fact, I can even put some more angle on it as well if I like. But let's rotate it back. And the last step of the rotation will actually uh, chop off the bottoms. And there is our spectrum. We have one peak here that relates to the once per revolution vibration, which could be unbalanced, could be bent shaft, it uh, could be a couple of things, eccentricity and so on. But keeping it simple, we'll just talk about unbalance. And if we don't have very much vibration at that frequency, if it's really running quite smooth, it's been balanced well, then that peak will be lower. And you can see how much easier it is to look at this than this here. And if we've got, you know, very little bearing vibration or no bearing vibration, the peak won't be there at all, or a little bit of bearing vibration. But we know because of the geometry of the bearing, where this peak will show up. So when it appears, we can say, oops, that indicates there's a potential bearing fault. And as that vibration increases in amplitude from measurement to measurement, we get to see it. But the nice thing about this simulator is we can just play around and say, well, let's, let's change the vibration from the fan. Now, normally the spectrum isn't color coded this way. You will just see it all in one color and you'll have to go through some effort to actually identify what these peaks mean. But the easiest thing to do first is always identify this 1x peak and say, well, this is my shaft turning speed. In this case, it's not the motor shaft speed, but it's this uh, fan shaft speed. So we can say, well, this is 1x. This is my once times revolution of this shaft. And because I know I've got, say, 10 blades, then the distance between here and there is a tenth of the distance between here and there because there were 10 blades. Uh, and that will always be the case. Even if we speed up the motor a little bit, the grey uh, peak will move by 10% and the orange peak will move by 10%, but it's, it's uh, a greater movement. Um, so that it's a great simulator for explaining what's going on because now you can look at the spectrum and visualise those, those time waveforms behind each one of those peaks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the iTeach Spectra Simulator. Thanks very much for watching.